I've had a lot of people asking me about the acoustic guitar tone from one of the latest videos I posted. So I'm gonna show you how I got that acoustic guitar tone with the gear that I have. Now I don't have the world's greatest acoustic guitar setup. In fact, that's the next thing that I wanna get is a good pair of condenser microphones for recording acoustic guitar. But I wanted some acoustic on this song, so I just worked with what I have. And I think that's something that's really important for a lot of people for self-producing music. It's very easy in your head to say, you know, I'll put out my next single or put out my first song once I have this guitar or this amplifier or this next piece of gear. But if you have that mindset, you're never gonna put any music out. So my thing is just work with what you have, try to make it sound as good as you can and just go for it. Put stuff out, even if it's not the greatest quality content that you can possibly do, just go for it. It's the only way you'll learn and get better. And then eventually you'll start to improve your productions and improve your songs until the point where they do sound how you want them to sound. For this acoustic guitar recording, I actually use this microphone, the Shure SM7B which is much more known as a podcasting mic or a vocal mic than it is for recording instruments. But I have something here that makes this work pretty well for acoustic guitar, and that's underneath here, you can't see it, it's called the Cloud Lifter CL1. And what that does is increases the gain level of this microphone with a nice clean signal. So that's the reason I can sit back from this microphone, you know, about a foot away and you can still hear it really well. Usually without that, I have to get really close to the microphone. If you watch some of my older videos with this mic, you'll see my face right up on it. So I got this so I could do this for lessons and videos to kind of sit back a little bit further, but it also made this work for acoustic guitar, which is great. So I just mic'd it up how you normally mic up an acoustic guitar mic, six to 12 inches away at the 12th fret. Now I also recorded a DI signal through this radial DI box straight to the interface, and that allowed me to have two different tones that I could blend together. Now ideally you'd have two different microphones and then I could kind of blend those sounds together. But in lieu of that, I use this and the DI. So on this recording, that's what you're hearing. Here's the acoustic guitar, how I recorded it with no processing. And that sounds pretty good as it is right off the bat. So I have mostly the microphone, and the first thing I did was to kind of balance out the levels between the mic and the DI. So if we just solo the mic, you get this. And that's a pretty good sound, but I wanted to bring in some of that DI as well, because it has a lot of high end and attack where the microphone is maybe a little bit on the muddy side. So here's just the DI. You can hear a lot more of that pick attack. So what I did was to blend in the DI up to a point where I liked how it was adding into the microphone. So it's mostly the microphone you're hearing and then that DI signal to add a little bit of attack and high end. So that's the raw sound without any processing. So let's go through some of this acoustic guitar processing. This is just the dry signal I recorded. Let's look at the SM7B first, the microphone, since that's the main sound. I just have a couple of plugins, but they're gonna do a lot. So first we've got some compression. This is the CLA 76, which is an 1176 compressor. I actually just found a setting called acoustic guitar and just tweaked it from there. So let's hear what that is doing. What it's really doing is evening out the level of the acoustic guitar. So Acoustic guitar is an instrument that can have a lot of peaks and low points as far as volume goes, like it can be very inconsistent. So the compression is just gonna bring up those quieter moments, bring down some of those loud moments and just kind of make everything a little more even and also add a little bit of character and life to it. So I have a slightly slower attack, so you still get those pick attacks at the beginning and an even slower release. And it's really just kind of filling out the sound. So you get that compression and it holds for a bit before it releases at the end. And I'm pretty aggressive with this. In some cases it's hitting like up to 10 dB almost of compression. It's kind of living right around five for the most part and a slower attack so that the initial transients of the notes come through and then a slower release so that compression can kind of bloom out a little bit. Next, 
We have some EQ. This is the Fab Filter Pro Q3, which I use all over the place. Pretty simple what I'm doing here. I've got a high pass, get rid of all that low information. This microphone has a ton of boomy low end. So basically anytime I use it on vocals or anything, I'm gonna cut out a lot of that low end. It's unnecessary in this acoustic guitar to have all that low end. It's a solo, it just needs to cut through on the top end. So that's gonna keep it from getting too muddy. And then I do a massive shelf boost on the high end. Now, this is what it felt like it needed. It might seem extreme, but I wanted all that top end so that the guitar really cut through in this sort of dense mix. And I did a little notch there, something maybe I didn't like the sound of, but that's super small as well. So here's how this sounds off and then on. Notice how much life that brings to the guitar. And it might seem a little bit harsh in solo, but as I mentioned in the context of the mix, this is gonna allow it to really pop out. Next is this plugin called BX Refinement or Brainworks Refinement. And this is something you don't have to do. I just felt like it needed a tiny bit of it. And this is a harshness control. So since I boosted all that top end, I wanna control maybe a little bit of the really harsh frequencies. It's barely doing anything. In fact, you probably won't even be able to hear it. Super subtle, I just felt like it needed a little bit of that. And lastly, some delay. In acoustic guitar recordings, you have some natural reverb. Even with a microphone like this, I have a little bit of natural reverb. So I'm not gonna add any reverb to this guitar. You definitely can add reverb to acoustic guitars. It worked really well. But in the context of a dense mix like this, I didn't feel like it needed any more reverb. But the delay is gonna add some width and body to the sound. Now I don't have the mix very high. It's just enough to kind of like add a little bit on the sides. <laughs> So notice how that makes it feel like it's a little bit wider and a little bit bigger and more full bodied. So here is all the plugins off and then I'll flip them on as it plays. You can tell how much of a massive difference all that stuff is making. Now on the DI signal I did basically the same thing. Just slightly different settings on some of these plugins. So the compressor I believe is completely the same. Even more compression on this one than on the microphone. And that's allowing for all those, the attack of the notes, which is what I'm really using this DI for. It allows those to even kind of come out more. And the EQ, Similar, but a little bit less extreme on the high end because it doesn't need as much top end. This DI was pretty bright as it was. I also boosted around the fundamental tone because this was a little empty, the DI, and I wanted to bring up some of that body. For the refinement, I did a little bit more of this harshness control because this DI is so much brighter than the microphone. So that just kind of controls some of the really harsh stuff. And then with the delay, I did higher mix on this as well. So I'm kind of pushing these plugins maybe a little bit more on the DI recording because I felt like it needed it because there's no natural reverb in the DI, right? I'm just recording straight in, so it's super dry. A little bit higher mix on the delay is gonna allow this to feel a little bit bigger and maybe like I actually recorded it with a microphone. <laughs> Here's both the mic and the DI with all the plugins off and I'll flip them on as it goes. An absolute world of difference, right? The, the original recording is not that bad and it gave me enough to work with, but once I did the compression and EQ especially, it just kind of brings everything to life everything's even, it's popping through, it's cutting through. Now let's listen to this in the context of the mix and I'll flip the plugins off and on as it goes so you can see what they're doing. They're gonna start off.
So hopefully you can see how all of those plugins are working together to bring this up and sit in the mix. One last thing to talk about is automation. Now I have these two channels going into an acoustic guitar bus and I'm not doing any processing on the bus because I did that on the solo channels, but you can see how much automation I'm doing. And this is just to allow this guitar to sit even more in the mix. Acoustic guitar is very uneven, even if it's a really good player, which I'm not necessarily the greatest player in the world for this kind of stuff, but even if it's a really good player, you're gonna have some unevenness in the playing volume of stuff, right? Like lower notes are gonna be louder sometimes, or certain notes you'll hit louder, fast picking stuff will be quieter. So I wanted to kind of bring up the stuff that needed to come out and bring down the things that were poking out. And you can see some of this just visually. There's big peaks. Sometimes I wanna bring out like this last one, for instance, you know, it's just a little bit too loud and I wanted to bring it down. So even on this first run, there's a really fast picking like right here and I brought that up. And then when the full band kicks in here at measure 19, I bring it up even more to get, just to allow this to kind of sit where it needs to sit. And if you listen to it, you can't really hear that, but it's just doing a lot to kind of fit this in the right part in the mix. Like this one slide here, I wanted to bring that up. This note I brought down and I'm really pretty detailed on this kind of stuff, especially with an acoustic instrument like this. You know, it can be a little tedious, but as I mixed, I listened through the Spartan button. Okay, I gotta bring this up, bring this down. I really want this to, to pop out, but I also don't want it to be too loud. I think a lot of times mixing, mixing solos, people will push the solos too loud. Like all you can hear is the solo and the band kind of goes away when really the solo should fit into the mix. You still want to hear all the details and all of the notes, but you don't want it to pop out in a bad way. So I'm just trying to find that right balance of like, okay, I need to bring this run up so I can hear it, but also I want this to kind of fit nicely into the mix as a whole. So this is what this needed. You know, sometimes I might need less automation or more depending on the recording, depending on the song. Uh, but automation is is a big step, I think, to taking your mixes to the next level. And I do automation all over the place. If you look at the electric solo that happens right afterwards, I've got some automation going on here as well. Um, not quite as much because electric guitar is a little bit more naturally compressed and even volume-wise as it is. But even there, I'm going to do some things to bring out certain parts that I want to bring out. So all of that in combination with the plugins is kind of what makes this sit out in the mix and kind of fit it in the right way. Also, some of this has to do with the arrangement as well. So in this part of the song, I'm making sure that the drums are a little quieter. There's no heavy rhythm guitars. The bass is doing something a little bit higher up. I'm leaving more space for the acoustic guitar. If I want to record acoustic solo like this in a heavy metal context, it's like it's not going to work too well over super heavy riffing. It's much harder to do that. So for it to sit well within the context of the song, it makes sense for the things to come down dynamically overall. And the arrangement kind of helps this pop out as well. So it's a combination of the writing, the arrangement, the recording, and all the processing on the back end. So it's not just one thing that makes a recording like this sound good. And honestly, you know, I, th I think this sounds pretty good and I'm pretty pleased with it. Ideally, I could get an even better acoustic sound, but I worked with what I had. So if you're in the same boat and you don't have maybe the best gear in the world, try a few of these ideas out and see if you can get something that sounds pretty good. I think, you know, there's a lot you can do. You can't necessarily polish a turret if it's really bad, but if the recording's decent, you can do a lot to make it sound really good, even if you don't have the world's best gear. If some of these tricks helped you, please let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, hit the bell notification, like, comment, share. Till next time, stay proggy.